And we're back with a quick tutorial on oxygen not included. And this tutorial is all about getting from the early game to mid game. And early game I would define as you've got up a stable food source, you've got yourself up an electrolyzer, maybe not one quite as gigantic as this, you may not need something that industrial, and you've got a water source to feed that electrolyzer. So you've got sustainable oxygen, you've got pretty sustainable food, and you could coast along like this quite happily for several hundred cycles. But how do you get into cooling? How do you get refined metals? How do you get plastics? You've got to start worrying about those things all now. And there seems to be this uh, learning cliff, as it was described by uh, one of someone in the comments. Where How do you get from here to that first steps, to those first steps where you get plastic, refined metals and uh, cooling all up and running? So in this, I just want to go through how you do that. And the main tech is Atmosuits. Atmosuits allow you to really get out there and gain access to resources that before were unavailable due to heat and just inhospitable environments. So in this example, I've got a, normally what I do is I like to make one square base and have one atmosphere dock exit. And usually the right hand or left hand side of my base is sort of where I went out and grabbed some extra resources just to get to the sustainability level that we're currently at. So in this instance, we're going left so that we can do some more, uh, some more excavation out here to get more resources. All we're looking for is a source of cooling, as in a big pool of liquid to dump heat into so we can get our steel. Oh, and we also want to get our hands on some oil so we can make plastic. Now, of course, you could get your plastic from using Drecos, but I can't cover all the options. So we're going to assume you have oil or some source of oil somewhere on the map. And we're going to presume it's at the bottom. Atmos suits allow you to ignore extreme heats, uh, extreme heat, cold, uh, germs. Well, germs you can pretty much ignore anyway. Um, but it also allows you to ignore oxygen problems. So you don't have to worry about getting enough oxygen down to an area to keep your duplicates oxygenated which means they can dig, 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 and dig some more, and you don't have to worry about going cutting in a straight line, which is exactly what we're doing here. We just want to go straight down and grab some oil. We don't care about anything else that gets in the way. We're just going to dig straight through it. Well, unless we run into some neutronium or, say, a giant pile of really boiling hot uh, obsidian over there. I remember that from when I, I started this map. Anyway, we're just going down here to get our hands on some oil. Is this the oil bump? We may have to keep digging. Oh, okay, I may not remember everything. It turns out this was a very difficult way to get down to the oil biome. There's turns out there's a volcano right here. There's another one right over here. Yeah, I, I forgot about that. So instead, I took a slightly alternative route and we came straight down here. And then, yeah, we're going straight down to the oil biome. And then all you do is you just dig out each side and tap into all the pockets of oil you can find. All the localized ones you got. There's There's plenty of oil pockets usually around the place. You can usually keep digging through and just finding more and more. This has given us a nice big stockpile of crude oil here, which we're going to use for... Well, we're going to dump heat into this because we don't care. So we're going to dump a bunch of hot stuff into this and use that to refine our early steel. To facilitate that refinement, we're going to put a metal refinery up here. And I'm not even making this one out of ceramic. You can do it with igneous rock. It'll have an overheat temperature of 90, so maybe don't put it in the oil biome. Close to the oil biome is fine, but usually not directly in it because the oil biome can get up to close to 90 degrees and it might overheat. Now for the liquid pump down here, I'm using gold amalgam because gold amalgam has an overheat temperature of 125 and that should be fine inside this oil unless you have an abyssalite break and the magma has done something nasty to your oil. Now if you do not have access to gold amalgam on your map, then your next best bet is to find something like uh, yep, one of these salt biomes or a slime biome full of polluted water and use them for your refinement. You can, use, you can dump a bunch of heat into the salt water the way we're going to do in a minute, but if you don't have access to gold amalgam, that's your best bet. So, now that all that's done, we still need to hook up a power supply. And to hook up a power supply, I'm just going to recommend a couple of local coal generators. Now, in this instance, I've built maybe not so local. I built them over here because I'm going to be using these for powering some of our stuff later on. But, uh, yeah, you can just build the, you could build these directly in the oil bomb if you wanted. Well, maybe not directly in it. Close by, same as the refinery type of thing, because they can overheat. And that will get us there. Oh, I'll clean it up in a second. And that will get us our power down there for running this, or getting this at least started. This, all we're trying to do here is get up 1.2 tons of steel. That's it. 1,200 kilos of steel is all we want from this. And from there on in, we can rip this all out and do something else with it. System up and running. We've got our crude oil getting dumped in here into the refinery. That's going to act as our heatsink. Then all we'll do is we want 12 tons of steel. However, we can't get that without 12 tons of iron, or... Sorry, not 12 tons of steel, 1.2 tons of steel, which requires 1.2 tons of iron. Meaning we'll just queue up both of those. All that will happen is this is going to dump an awful lot of heat into the oil biome. But we don't really care. There's enough mass in here to handle it and it won't cause this place to get so uncomfortable that it's a problem. Then we're going to, once that's all done, 
You will notice that the iron has completed successfully. However, the steel has not. The reason being we're missing two vital ingredients, uh, refined carbon and lime. That's well, very important ingredients when it comes to it. The kiln, very easy. That's what you use to make the refined carbon. We'll just queue up 10 pieces of that. The kiln is very handy as well because it doesn't have an overheat temperature. It just has a melting temperature, which means you can throw this anywhere. And so long as it doesn't go above whatever you made it out of. What's the temperature of this? Uh, yeah, we made it out of aluminum ore. Yeah, this will melt at about a thousand degrees. It's got a lot of... It's got a lot of give to it. It'll be fine. So we'll queue that up and you can pretty much place that anywhere. So the thing you need to do is get your hands on lime. Lime, a little bit trickier. But all you do is you go find your rock crusher and you set up fossils to lime and eggshells to lime forever. That will give you lots of lime. Usually enough to get the early early start on it. Uh, getting your hands on some poke shell molts later on will also be helpful, but that's not what we're here for. So eggshells to lime, uh, fossils to lime, and poke shell molt to lime will all get you enough lime that you should be able to crank out that first... 1.2 tons of steel and there goes our first batch of it uh, your steel will show up under a different section under here where is it it goes under in, not an industrial ingredients manufactured material there we go steel this is also where plastic shows up as well ceramic should really show up here too but yeah, never mind that's a different story now we just have to wait until we've accumulated enough of all of the necessary resources to make 1.2 tons of steel this is what it looks like when it's in operation the crude oil is coming in at about 83 degrees we're spitting it about spitting it out at about 219 400 kilos goes through per operation, and considering the va m vast quantity of crude oil down here, that heat has been eaten like a chap. It, it's barely affected the temperature down here at all, which is exactly what we want. That's it. We have acquired the 1.2 tons of steel. Now, what are we going to use it for? Plastic. We need to get 200 kilos of plastic up and running, which means we need to get up an oil refinery, which means straight under refinement, oil refinery, and we're going to make it out of steel. Now, this is only temporary. This is a temporary, temporary, very temporary system. But, uh, one second, I'm going to have to dig up some plants. All we're doing here is we've put down the metal, the oil refinery, made it out of steel. This is going to dump its liquid into the liquid reservoir, and we're going to refine quite a large chunk of petroleum. As you can see, 10 kilos of crude oil comes in per second. It gets converted to 5 kilos of petroleum, and that petroleum gets dumped into the liquid reservoir. However, a side effect of using one of these oil refineries is they dump out natural gas. It's an annoyance... But at the, for the time being, we don't really care too much. And why is everyone running away so good? You know what? Let's uh, crank up the priority on that. All we're going to do is build up a nice big storage tank of petroleum. I would like to have eh, a few tons of this stuff on hand because we are going to be using quite a bit of it. So let's just fill up at least two and a half tons of this stuff before we move on. Two and a half tons of petroleum acquired. Uh, oil refinery, we no longer need it. So we'll deconstruct that. Now we're ready to get into the uh, constructing a little industrial brick to help us refine all our future refinements without having to go through all this trouble again. Oh, give me one second while I sweep up this gunk. God, that took too long. Note to self, it's usually better off just to demolish the tiles, let all the dirt fall to the bottom, then manually sweep it up. That takes way too long. Anyway, next up, we are going to get plastic. We need 200 plastic before we can get into these things, so we're going to use steel for these things. Don't worry, we're going to be recycling anyway, and this is only still temporary, temporary. And we'll just brick these up on either side, and we'll set them up with some power. And done. Bringing in the power from just down here. We're bringing in the plumbing, which is coming from all the way down in the oil biome. And we are bringing up petroleum. So the petroleum from down here is going to get pumped up and dumped into the ah, plastic presses. And we're just going to run this until we've got about 200 kilos of plastic. Maybe a little bit more, but 200 kilos is all we really need. And the bottle empty is here to dump in some water. The reason being, plastic presses overheat, have a tendency to overheat really quickly. So what we'll do is we'll just jump, dump in 200 kilos of water. We'll enable auto bottle on that. The 200 kilos of water will just stop these buildings from overheating. And that should make it quite simple and efficient to make our first batch of plastic. And it's started. So that first one is uh, going off. Once the second one is up and running, I think it'll take us about 200 seconds to produce enough plastic. Uh, yeah, well, the plastic can now appear there. It's fairly simple. Oh, don't turn that off. I don't want to be sweeping in any more water in there and done so once we get 200 kilos of plastic i'll cut back in well we will turn these off and then i'll cut back in again done all the plastic we need is made we've got 240 kilos of it sitting there ready to be accessed uh for yeah these things give off carbon dioxide so i just ran a little quick gas pipe down here and dumped it down there we don't care we have atmos suits so we don't give it uh, we don't care about anything outside our base quick note on atmos suits it's usually a good idea to box in your base and just have one exit other people have tendencies to put, say, one atmosphere dock at the top, one at the bottom of their base, one on, you know, one's on each side. I just prefer having one exit and just demolish the map from there. Your choice, though. Now, next up, we've got our plastic. What do we do with it? We are going to take all the resources we have made and we are going to dump them all into some sort of cooling solution. 
And also a production solution. So, there goes our steam turbine. That required 200 kilos of plastic, so we can only make one of them. Then here's our aqua tuner. We are going to make that out of steel. 1.2 tons, which is all we can afford to make. Now we're going to have to put in a cooling loop to keep the steam turbine cool, because the steam turbine will overheat if we don't cool it. So we're just going to put in a liquid reservoir here. And we're going to set up some plumbing. Uh, insulated liquid pipes are going to be required to go in here. That's the output pipe right about there. And then this here is going to be going like that. This is a... Uh, Oh, this is to allow the liquids to keep flowing no matter what happens. What we're doing here is, if this water comes down here, it can't get into this section. It will, if the aqua tuner is off, it will pop across here and go across the, the bridge. If it can go through, it'll pop through here and out the other side. And we're going to use this to provide cooling to the rest of the area. So we're just going to grab some regular pipes and we're going to make those out of granite. We'll run them down here, run them all the way across. And then we'll just run this up to the top and I suppose back in this way. You know what? We're going to put in a temperature sensor right there as well. And there we go. Oh, one second. Need some minor modification there. Uh, I need to have this pipe segment here available so I can detect what temperature the water is coming out at. If I can't detect what temperature the water is coming out of the what tank at, I can't determine how cool this loop is. It'll make more sense uh, once we, we activate this. But for the time being, just make sure you have one pipe you can measure the temperature of before it hits the aqua tuner. A little bit of a minor modification. I moved the steam turbine over just one tile. Uh, my own problem. What we're doing here is this: these pipes here are going to be used for dumping heat from our metal refinery. So our metal refinery is going to be placed down here, and our metal refinery is going to dump all of its heat up in here into the steam turbine so the steam turbine can destroy that heat. At the same time, this aqua tuner over here is going to be able to dump its heat into the steam turbine as well. Oh, and that reminds me, we should probably get the plumbing set up for that as well. Uh, this is going to be dumping out uh, hot water, which we will want to dump down here. Hmm, where are we going to put that? Uh, down here? Yeah, that seems like a good plan. Right there. Boom. Hey, then we'll seal this up here. Oh, you know what? Let's uh, wait till they finish that up. That's the basic guts of it. Oh, I will have to put in power as well, but once I've got in the power and all that, we can seal this up and start it. Now, before I put all this in, I save the game because I'm going to show you a couple of variants or ways you can start this so you can try this yourself. Before we start this up, we need to fill this with water and we need to get rid of all the oxygen in here. If there's oxygen in here, it's going to confuse things. Now, there was... Uh, I, in the past, I used to have different ways of dealing with this, but I've got a much simpler method now of dealing with getting the oxygen out of there. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to dump in some polluted water. 200 kilos of the stuff. Then, on top of that polluted water, we're going to dump in some clean water. And we're going to copy those settings over to the rest of these. So the polluted water will sit at the bottom. And then when we dump in the clean water, it will form a layer across the top. And it'll force out all the gases. Well, not quite all of them. We're going to have a little bit of a problem over here in the corner. Nothing a little judicious deleting of a block won't fix. And then once that's gone, all the water is now forced out of there. And you can check yourself by just going into the gas overlay. And you'll notice, yep, while it doesn't look like that tile is full, it definitely is. Oh, and let's sweep up that gunk while we're in there. The only downside to this is, well, when we do evaporate these, the polluted water will leave behind some dirt. It's an annoyance. You could also use brine, salt water, that kind of stuff as well. And oh, yeah, I don't need any more water, do I? You know what? Let's set these to sweep only. Uh, yeah, there we go. Better. Uh, so yeah, you can do all of those. Just be aware it will leave a little bit of debris behind. And if you're a neat freak, it might kind of get on your nerves. Me, I'm learning to live with it. And we've managed to completely fill that up. And all the gases are out, no need for a vacuum, no need for anything messy, all done, all dusted and finished. Next up we stick the team steam turbine on top, and you'll notice the plumbing is already set up. And we are ready to use this. Now, for power, I've ran, well, I've put in a whole bunch of coal generators. One of the joys of running ranches. You can always have lots and lots of coal. This has allowed me to run a power spine up here, and dump it into the metal refinery, and dump that up into there. However, there's a few things we need to fill. One, we need to fill, fill the cooling loop, and two, we need to fill the metal refinery. So, cooling loop, that's very simple. And that's the start of the cooling loop. All you do is you make a little pit in the ground, dump in a liquid pump, and have that liquid pump fed by a couple of bottle emptiers that jump in polluted water. Now, the reason we use polluted water is polluted water is very, 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 very useful for cooling. Reason being, it doesn't vaporize until 120, meaning it's got a higher boiling point, and it doesn't freeze until minus 20 meaning it's far better than regular water. It's just got a... It has the same amount of specific heat capacity, meaning it gives you the same amount of cooling as regular water, but it just has more flexible temperature ranges. Oh, and we want to set this cooling loop to say... Ooh, let's just say 25. We, we, we don't want to go too crazy. So if the temperature is above 25, you're going to turn on and provide cooling. 
Now, we want to keep running this until we've got a more polluted water in this than we need. And by that I mean we want to be able to check in this tank and there should be a 100 or 200 kilos of water in here just to help even out the flow. Uh, we can see has it almost done it there. Yeah, we should be good. Yeah, that's perfect. So we'll just uh, stop those now. We'll put those to sweep only. And if you check here, that should have stabilized. We're now at 319 kilos of polluted water. What does what this does is it provides a sort of a, an even buffer. As the liquid goes through, it always gets... Yeah. This water is, here is coming in, let's say, at 21C or 21.6. Then by the time, once it hits into the tank, though, it mixes with all the water that's already in there, evening out the temperature before it gets dumped into the aqua tuner. This allows you to keep a nice, even temperature going through the, the, the aqua tuner and you don't end up with anything ending up getting too cold or too hot. Just a nice, even flow. And if you check that, that's all the way rotating around. And soon those pipes down there will be dumping their chill into the sandstone. Those pipes are made of granite. Granite is, uh, well, it's not as good as, say, a radiant pipe at dumping out temperature, but it's really cheap and easy to get at this point in the game. We want to fill this metal refinery up with a coolant. And the best coolant to use at this stage of the game, well, you don't have access to super coolant, which would be lovely, but uh, incredibly expensive. So the best one to use is usually petroleum. Petroleum has very high, term, well, has decent thermal capacity and it doesn't boil very easily. It gets all the way up to about 500 C before you're going to encounter any problems. So we're just going to send that across here, feed it off our line that we've already got coming up from the bottom of the map. And we're going to dump that into right there. That should allow us to fill this up. It takes about 400 kilos for each operation of this, so 800 kilos is the most this will hold. You can try queuing up some more, you can do things with liquid tanks for storage and all this stuff, but it's effectively just a complication. Using 800 kilos is usually more than sufficient to keep the machine running. Almost flat out. Uh, and, and by and large, what keeps this thing from functioning even faster than standard is your duplicates will operate it so quickly that it won't be able to spit out its coolant fast enough. That's usually what slows you down. It's not filling it up with coolant, it's your duplicates are just too quick. Anyway, we'll fill this up, and there we go, 800 kilos of petroleum. It's good to go, and then we can break off this pipe. We don't need it anymore. At this point, we're ready to fire this machine up and start refining some more metals. In fact, we're ready to do several things all at once. Uh, first, let's get in some refinement. So let's say plastic press. Yeah, we'll get in a plastic press there. Also, we'll want a kiln because we do we want some ceramics. Oh, and we're also going to want some more refined carbon so we can make more steel. Uh, anything else we need? Nope, that should be fine for now. So we'll set all of those up as well, and that will allow us to produce, well, most of the metals we need to do, expand this even further. Our steel refinement has started to make all the water in here boil. The polluted water takes a little bit longer, but now that that's all started to boil, it's eventually going to hit temperature and dumping heat into the steam turbine. Steam turbine has been hooked up by a rather roundabout route to the power grid. Uh, not a huge deal. And also there's that little bit of dirt I was talking about that's left behind when the polluted water evaporates. No big deal. Anyway, temperature wise, you'll notice that down here, the temperature is still rather chilly. That's because of all that cooling loop we put in place. This allows us to expand our steel production, our plastic production, and our, well, ceramics and clay and uh, refined carbon production without having to worry about the heat becoming an issue. Okay, so we've got 2.9 tons of steel, 800 kilos of plastic, and we have more than enough materials to expand this if we want to. This is how you get over the hump. If you see someone with a giant industrial brick, it's they started off scrambling for a few pieces of resources, same as anyone else. Now, this steam turbine here, though, it has gotten too hot. It's gone over 100 degrees, which is making it a little bit difficult to uh, get rid of the heat it's accumulating. So all we're going to do is grab, well, lead, copper, it doesn't really make a difference, any sort of material here, and we're just going to make radiant pipes right there right behind the steam turbine. That should help spread out the chill and help cool down the steam turbine. And there we go. Now the steam turbine is operating at full capacity and the temperature is rapidly dropping because of those nice radiant liquid pipes we put in behind it. You can spread out the rate, you can in replace a lot of these with radiant liquid pipes if you want to help spread out the chill a lot better. But by and large, this area is going to remain not the worst, though you might want to spread a little bit more chill around your plastic presses. And well, actually the kilns as well. Now, this is a very small industrial brick. You can definitely expand it, but before we get into that, I just want to show you what you're going to want to do after you get yourself this set up. You're probably going to want to start refining your own uh, petroleum, or you're refining crude oil on the spot. The petroleum you started with is going to run out, and when it does, you're going to want some more. Plus, you can use it for power. So let's just do a quick setup here of this one. I've done these a few times before, but uh, yeah, let's do that. Uh, inside liquid pipe. That's going to run into those two. That's going to run into that one, and that will go down into our liquid storage tanks. This is just a, a standard setup. Uh, I think I've got a whole video on this somewhere. 
plumbing, liquid pipe, insulated, that goes through, and then that'll store us up two whole tanks of this stuff. To help with making sure we don't uh, use this too much, we're going to put a liquid pipe element sensor right there, stick in an automation wire, and have that hooked back up to the oil refinery. That way when both of these are full, this oil refinery will shut off, which is what we want. Now, before we, we activate this though, we'd want to vacuum out this whole room. The reason being this room is going to end up full of natural gas, and we'd prefer if that was not the case. So normally you'd brick this up, put in a gas pump, vacuum out everything, and then once it's full, that's done, you'd have natural gas in there only, and you use that natural gas to feed it into a power generator or something along the lines. However, what I did say was, this is just a very bare-bones basic setup. If you want to, you could go much more aggressive on your start and really leave yourself more room for expansion. This is just too small, in my opinion. This would be a more aggressive start. What you would do here is the exact same thing. You only need one steam turbine, you only need one aqua tuner, so all your starting resources will be the same. And then you've just left yourself a little bit of extra expansion room up here. By putting these in here, as you refine more plastic, you can just start throwing down more steam turbines across the top. And there you go. Boom, 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 boom. You can expand that as large as you want, and you, you don't have to put them down immediately. You can wait until the plastic has come in. Same thing down here, you can put in more refineries, so we can dump in, say, three of them there. And because we've got all the plumbing already put in place, all we have to do is hook up some insulated pipes, fill them up with some petroleum, and we're good to go. And we just expanded the cooling loop down a bit so it covered more floors. That's it. So anytime you see anyone with a large industrial brick, they started off with a small one and then just expanded it. And as you've played, as you play the game more and more, you learn how to just preemptively be ready to expand into a larger industrial brick to meet your needs. So I'll just do one last quick look at something before we go. So here's one I made earlier. Now this is just a, an older design I used. You can spend hours working on these, and I have, literally. But the whole point of some of them is you can design them in ways that provides better decor, so you can counteract the negative wires in there by putting in, say, a statue floor. You can put your plastic on one level so that the water helps cool the whole floor. You can have one big cooling block over here. I know this is... Oh, trying to explain this all in one is really kind of confusing. But you have your oil refinery down here pumping out the crude oil, or the petroleum, and that petroleum can be used to power the whole system. Anyway until you get around to doing a petroleum boiler later on, in which case you can rip that out. The natural gas can also be dumped into the natural gas generators, and you can use that same cooling loop. The same cooling loop that we're running off this one aqua tuner can provide cooling for your power supply area as well. So leave yourself lots of room for expansion, and the first time you do an industrial brick, it will probably be fairly small and it will do its job, but later on you'll learn how to expand them and make them bigger and bigger. But for the early ones, all you need to remember is you just need 1,200 kilos of steel, 200 kilos of plastic, and you can make yourself a nice little industrial brick that will allow you to expand and make it as big as you want, assuming you have the space for it. Anyway, I hope that uh, that helps you get from the that over the, over the hump from the early game into the mid game, and uh, good luck.